Hey bestie, it's B. Welcome or welcome back. The year is wrapping up. I cannot believe we're already in December. I feel like I blinked and this year completely just, just went by. But I'm really excited to get into 2024 because this year has been interesting. I'm gonna say interesting to say the least. I've had quite the lows and quite the highs. The lows were very low this year. Okay, let's be totally real. I wanted to take this video to just go over some of the most valuable things I have learned this year and my reasoning for it. But before we get into it, a little housekeeping. I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Habria Jones. You can come hang there. And if you'd like to support this channel and you like my content, leave a thumbs up, a comment down below, or share this video. Free ways to support, and I really appreciate it. So let's get into it. First and foremost, I'm gonna say don't post on the internet when you are highly emotional. Obviously, I really have to abide by that because I have a platform, but even those of you who don't, don't do it. Just trust me on that one, sleep on it. And if you do wanna talk about something that has caused a lot of emotions for you, try to talk about it when you're in a calm state. That is all. This one has been really big for me this year, but you can choose your perspective. A lot of you know, I did not start this year off really great. The perspective that I had at the beginning of this year was actually really scary how I got there because I didn't realize I got there. It happened really quickly. It was like one little thought that became contagious to all of my thoughts. And slowly I dug myself into a really deep hole. So the place that I'm in right now is truly the complete opposite of where I was at the beginning of the year. And I'm grateful that I've had both perspectives this year because I've been able to really see that my thinking was a choice. I chose to see negative at the beginning of the year. I chose to be resentful and kind of do the whole woe is me, like why me? Like I'm so tired. To be fair, part of that was because I was really overwhelmed and I felt like I was carrying too much and I felt like it didn't matter. Like why should I be working so hard for a bunch of strangers to not even watch my videos? Like I got in this really negative mindset. And I think what really was at the root of that was just being tired, <laughs> maybe even hungry. So yes, perspective is everything. And I think oftentimes your perspective might be a reflection of what's going on internally, how you're taking care of yourself. When you're taking care of yourself and tending to your mental health, you will see the good in the world. And gratitude is so powerful. It will literally change your life. It doesn't matter what age you are. I know that I have a very big young demographic of people start investing in your health now. And I don't just mean buy every supplement in the market. I mean, start learning how to take care of yourself. I've spent the last couple years trying to learn about how to take care of myself, how to eat properly, how to break my sugar addiction. There's so many things I've been working on doing because I've been motivated by seeing my family members have a lot of health issues. I think especially in the black community, the knowledge behind nutrition is not widespread and like easily known. I'll say it hasn't been easy for me to find out. I've hired nutritionists, professional people to seek out this information, but also this information is available via books and of course talking to your doctor. But it is very, very crucial. And I think if you can start to invest in your health now and build a routine while you're in your 20s, your 30s, even your 40s, then when you get to those more elderly years, you will not be blind blindsided by how to restructure your life all of a sudden if something does happen at an older age for you. Right now, I'm dealing with my mom having cancer. We just got her diagnosis and obviously it's really hard on our family, but I feel like it's caused this awakening in my body that I've never had before. And I want to not only help myself, but help my family through this really difficult time. And I also want to be able to pass this knowledge down in my family. And I also want to be able to help you guys if you're open to it. Your health is your wealth. And it's not until you get a diagnosis like cancer that you really feel the weight of that and start to question your habits. So don't play with that. Your health is so special. And it's just one really simple way that we can start to create a very high quality life for ourselves. On the note of investing in your health, walking has changed my life. So the note is that walking 
thing will change your life because it seriously will. I think that, especially in the United States, we don't necessarily have the best infrastructure to walk a lot of places unless you live in a place like New York. But I'll say I live in Texas and I've tried to walk from my place to my parents' place and the sidewalk just kept disappearing and I would all of a sudden be on a highway, obviously not safe. So for me this year, I love walking. I invested in a walking pad. I've talked about this on my other platforms, how it's literally changed my entire life. Look at my steps before I had a walking pad. 2,000 a day. Now check out the steps post walking pad, bitch. I've been able to structure and create these habits on a daily basis that have really, really helped me. But also now I'm starting to see like the changes in my body and my mental health, like it helps in so many areas. So I walk like a few miles every day and I just work on my laptop while I'm walking on that walking pad and it has done wonders. So find a way to get some kind of movement. But I think that if you can up your steps and I'm not saying it has to be 10,000, I'm just saying start walking more. It's gonna do so much for you, it promotes circulation, it helps your lymphatic system, it gets rid of visceral fat, like it really helps that slow steady pace does so much. You don't have to even like power walk like crazy. It's the slow speed that over time just makes the biggest difference. You don't always get what you want, okay? I know that's a tough pill to swallow. And I think that if we just went in accepting that we don't always get what we want, but more so that we get what we need and what we're ready for, that we would see what happens to us is not not like a plot against us, but more like, oh, we would come at it from a place of gratitude rather than resentment. Especially this year for me when there have been some really down times in me thinking, well, I'm not getting what I want here. You know, getting bad news or something bad actually happening to me. I've realized that it's not that I deserve those things, but it's that sometimes life just kind of happens. And I do believe everything happens for a reason. And that if you have the right mindset that it'll carry you through that and make you the best version of yourself. Not getting what I want, I would say in the past, has made me react with my ego where I'm like, you know what? Fuck these bitches, they don't know me, like I deserve better. I would get in my feelings about that. And now when I don't get what I want, I see it as a Hail Mary from the universe where they kind of shut that door for me because they're like, no, nah, don't worry about that, we don't need that. You know, I'm seeing it from a place of love now rather than a place of why can't I have this? You know what I'm saying? So in 2024, I think this will drastically change your life if when things don't go your way, you can just kind of take a moment to say, cool, thanks and move on because you know that something better is coming. This is quite literal, but your comfort zone is going to keep you stuck. I think something that I've noticed this year is that even if some people have a current situation that is making them miserable, they sometimes would rather stay miserable because it's their comfort zone, because it's predictable, because it's routine. And doing something new is even worse in some people's minds. So to that point, when people say that they want to make a change and they don't actually feel like they can step out of their comfort zone. I don't think you can do the two. So I've kind of gotten in this mode now and you might see this a little more in 2024 where I'm a little more on the tough love side now because you can't ask for change and then ask to stay in your comfort zone. You've got to be willing to step outside of that or you will stay stuck. I have my digital guide on how to make actual change. Finally, if you've been going through that cycle of I'm gonna do this and getting in the way of yourself, I have that guide for you. But what I want you guys to understand is that your comfort zone is not serving you. It's crazy. I watched a video this morning, The Chicken Shop on YouTube, love it, with Amelia. She was interviewing Cher and Cher said she's been out of her comfort zone her entire life. And look at how iconic she is. So push yourself. I think that is really one of the biggest joys of life is that we can constantly push to just pull a little bit more out of ourselves, do a little bit more, challenge ourselves. It can be fun. It doesn't have to be scary or miserable. Have fun with it. But that's what the journey is all about is just continually trying to one up yourself, not compete with the world, competing with you. Freedom and happiness is found in the courage to be disliked. I read the book, The Courage to Be Disliked, and I will say, according to reviews on the internet, this is a problematic book because it says some off the wall things, I'm not gonna get into it, but there are some points in there that I think are very, very key in terms of how people perceive you and how much it affects you. Because as long as you live under the thumb of how everyone feels about you, you will never reach the happiness, the fulfillment that you want because you'll always be doing it for everyone else. And as long as you're serving everyone else, you can't fulfill yourself. And I'm not saying be selfish and 
don't help other people, but don't live your life for other people. That is just not what you wanna do, and you don't wanna get to your end days and wish that you had done differently. But the book, The Courage to Be Disliked, I'm interested if you've read it, like what you think about it. It's based on Adlerian psychology. This book was very popular in Japan. I think that it just has one, a different cultural tone to it. And what I've seen mostly, it looks like Americans reviewing this being very upset about the things that they say sometimes because it kind of gives you that tough love of like, hey, get out of victim mode. But it's it's a little tougher than Bestie B. I could appreciate the perspective. There are some things that I'm still trying to digest too, but I can get with the fact that they said you cannot achieve freedom or happiness if you don't have the courage to be disliked. I fully believe that, especially as a content creator. Ooh. I love this one. Not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path. Girl, if that is not Bible right there, okay? That is so true. If you don't remember anything in 2024, I need you to keep that at the forefront of your mind. I think this year was my Saturn return because things got really, really bad this year, but I think that the destruction of what happened this year in my life was exactly the same. And when I was going through it, I was like, what the fuck? But now that I'm on the other other side of it, I'm like, you know what? I don't think it would have been possible for me to become the woman I want to become built on the foundation that I had at the beginning of the year. I had some sneaky little things that in many areas of my life were holding me back, not just within myself, within the people that I was around, within the people that worked with me. It all had to go. It had to get destroyed so that we could rebuild. And we are in the rebuilding phase now. So get ready for Superior Bestie B because she is going to be better than ever in 2024 let me tell you because we have done the work this year <laughs> okay but now i see that as damn i'm really glad all of that happened even though it was very uncomfortable it caused a lot of turbulence in my life i'm glad that it happened and the thing is i prayed for it to happen if you don't want that to happen don't say this i am open and receptive to how the universe wants to bless me literally i said this the next day that's when everything fell apart and i i am terrified of saying that now so only say it if you if you're ready for the smoke action breeds clarity into your life you you cannot think your way into a new life. Now, I know we are big on mindset here, but that is just the catalyst to what you have to do. That's just the first step. And a lot of people like to skip over that first step, which is why on my channel, I spend so much time digging into your mindset. Because if this isn't right, then you can't take the action. Typically, I think the actions are actually easy. It's the mindset around it that we have to work through and get through. So don't just think your way and keep dreaming about it. Put some action behind it, even if it's one little step that you can do. What can you do today action-wise to support the thoughts that you have? Change comes from one, committing to change, two, being consistent. This is the hard one. Three, persisting. So yes, you're going to commit to the change. You're going to say, I want to do this. I want to better this area of my life. Cool. That's the easy part though, making the commitment, right? But then we have to be consistent with showing up and creating that change. That's the hard part. And then the even harder part is persisting because when you commit to showing up consistently, you will run into challenges because you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You will, it's a part of the process. You're gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna experience a lot of things that don't feel so good at first. But if you can persist the most important step through the consistency and making that change, you will get on the other side of that and that change will happen for you. And not only that, it's gonna become the new norm for you. Just like you have a norm right now, now, it took a lot of days, a lot of repetition, a lot of consistency for whatever you have right now to be your norm. So if you do that for something new, understand that you will form a new norm. You just gotta give it some time. And kind of piggybacking off of that, your small daily habits influence your quality of life. I cannot reiterate this enough. Even with like me choosing to get up every day and just walk, right? It's a small thing in my day that I just do. And the fact that I've now done it every single day, this small act of getting up and walking, it has had a domino effect in my life. It's helped my physical appearance. It's helped my mental state. It's helped how productive I am. It's also inspired me to eat cleaner, to feel more energized and support myself in other ways. But it's the small daily habits that build what you see in your reality. So when people say things like, oh, it's just like a cigarette. I'm just having one. Well, one turns to like a few and you 
see how like these little small things can actually change your life. I had a conversation with my family because with my mom's diagnosis, I am trying to see how can we better our nutrition. I know that it's hard. I know that we have our comfort foods and a lot of cultural foods that just aren't supporting our health. And my dad made this comment that it's just one Chick-fil-A sandwich, but it's that one Chick-fil-A sandwich that we have once a week and then we have the pizza once a week too. And then we have the burger once a week and now we're having three fast food meals in the entire week. And when you think about it, especially when we have someone in our family battling cancer, it's really hard to all of a sudden make that change because our small daily habits have been something for so long. So now we have to create new small daily habits and that's what's going to make it feel less overwhelming because to tell my family hey we just got to eat super clean now because mom needs to get better that's overwhelming to hear but it starts slowly by making attainable changes and then over time those daily changes lead to something better and for us we want it to lead to my mom going into remission so focus on those small daily habits because they really do add up this might just be an opinion but I'm gonna say experiences Trump material things any day, any day. I am very intentional about the things I put in front of my audience, only things I think you guys would love. I know that's part of my job as an influencer, but I also think that it's important to remind you guys to invest in experiences. I think that you really can't put a number on those things because to go see another country, another culture, experience something outside of yourself, I think is one of the coolest things you could do in terms of being human. So focus on experiences, even if it's like a concert. I think that's just something that will make an imprint on your heart more than, you know, some designer bag or something. Not saying designer bags aren't cool. Like, get your bag, babe. But also, what are you gonna remember in 30, 40 years? What are you actually going to remember? I guarantee you it's not gonna be that pair of shoes. It's not gonna be that outfit. It's probably gonna be an experience. And the more that you have, the more beautiful it's gonna be to reflect on your life. Failure and adversity are life's greatest lessons. I don't even like to use the word failure. You guys know how I feel about that. But but it is a lesson. And when you decide to take the lesson, there's nothing wrong with so-called failing. It is a natural part of the human experience. And I know some of you might be my little perfectionist, but I need you to lean into more of making messes in 2024. And I'm preaching to the choir here. I literally signed up for a pottery class because it gave me permission to make a mess. And crazy enough, it has impacted me in my work in such a positive way. I think that a lot of people don't do things because they're just afraid of failing. But if you just knew like it wasn't that big of a deal and like, you know, for me, if I make a video and I just don't like something about it, I just won't post it. I wanna start giving myself permission to execute the ideas that come to mind because sometimes I stop myself because I'm afraid of failing or not executing properly. But make the mess, make the mistake. If you don't like it, do away with it and try again. It's really not that serious. We're on a floating rock and I think we forget that so much. Perspective really is everything everything. And like I said, what are you going to be concerned about in like 20, 30, 40 years? Not these things. These mistakes are perfectly fine, normal. And as long as you can take something from it, it's a good mistake. It's a great failure. It's a great lesson. I already mentioned this, but I'm going to say it again. Gratitude is powerful. If you're experiencing depression or anything of the sorts, I just highly recommend taking five minutes out of every day to do this one thing. If you can sit for five minutes and really think about just one thing that you are so incredibly thankful for. It could be a friend, a family member, your dog. It could be some restaurant that you love. It could be a place. If you can just sit there and think about it and focus on it solely for five minutes and how much you love it, and not just how much you love it, what do you love about it? Get real with the gratitude you're experiencing for this thing, this place, this person, and feel that. It's so powerful. And if you're experiencing something like depression, I really think that it's so helpful and helping you start to create a different perspective. And I wouldn't say anything I've never gone through, like I was depressed this year. So I understand. And sometimes just holding on to this image of something that I was so incredibly grateful for would be the difference between me feeling like I could get up one more day. Sometimes that's what I had to cling on to. So don't look past the good in your life. Try to focus on something good, even if it's something small, just one thing for five minutes today. Your reality is showing you your thoughts. Now you guys can fight me about this if you want, but what is this channel about? 
okay? We are the creators, we are the directors, we run the show, okay? And so if that is true, it starts here, right? How you perceive yourself influences your actions. How you perceive the world influences your actions. Your thoughts are going to reflect your reality. So how can you create thoughts that create a reality that is reflective of love, happiness, fulfillment? How can you structure your mind and your thoughts to create that? And it's not gonna be instantaneous. Over time, the way that you think starts to show up in your reality. And this might be months and months delays, years and years delay. But the more that you think about something, the quicker it's gonna show up. So try to be intentional about trying to see positive things to create the reality that you actually want. You have not because you ask not. I need y'all to get in your asking era and I need you to be okay with hearing no, okay? I have been absolutely shocked at the things I've been able to do this year because we just asked. It's that simple. And I have a new manager who's been such a great example of that. Like she just asked like some really cool questions that normally I don't ask when brands hit me up or I don't ask clients. And because she's just willing to ask questions, it gets us bigger opportunities and cooler opportunities. So just ask questions, ask for what you want. The worst they can say is no, you can go to someone else. Did you know that Walt Disney got like 50 no's? It might've been more than that before a bank gave him the money to make Disney. And you're sitting here like worried about a no? You better get on your Walt Disney shit, okay? Don't take things personal. We gotta start separating ourselves from experiences and people's actions and their, their stuff. Everyone is projecting. We all have our own reality. So we're all going to interpret that and go out into the world projecting shit onto other people, whether we realize it or not. So understanding that, I need you to stop taking things so personal. One thing I have learned is the haters in the comments, y'all ain't talking to me. You're talking to yourself, okay? When you're calling me ugly, you're calling yourself ugly. When you're calling me all sorts of names, I already know you're calling yourself those things. And when I finally learned that, and those of you who are creators, learn this quick, because if you really take to heart what people say about you online, you are gonna have a really hard time. But I stopped taking it so personal because I realized this person is using me as a mirror for some reason. And oftentimes, if you have a platform online, you are an easy mirror for a lot of people and they're just gonna come swinging some days and you're like, all right, I was just minding my black business. So stop taking things so personal, whether it's that or if it's maybe just not getting something that you want, don't beat yourself up over these things, okay? Accept what happened for what it is, move on. It is not a reflection of your character, of who you are. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes people are just weird and wacky. It has nothing to do with you. Let go of it. Everyone has trauma. Everyone has trauma. Now, of course, we all have different levels of trauma, but I think something that I'm gonna try to do with you guys in 2024, and I've already hinted at it, is we are gonna focus on getting out of victim mode. If I were to ask how many of you have trauma, I'm sure everyone would raise their hand. We're not special. Tyler Creator said this in one of his songs, everyone has trauma, you're not special. I'm not trying to disregard your trauma, but what I want so badly for you is to move to a place where you stop letting that trauma hold you back, because nine times out of 10, that trauma wasn't your fault. Whether it was or wasn't doesn't matter. I want you to stop making it the forefront of your focus. You are living in the past if you continue to let trauma control your life. I'm not saying it didn't happen to you. I'm not saying it wasn't horrible, but I am saying that you deserve to move on. Yes, you do. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna figure out some videos to help us do that because I'm so excited for us to let it go. The best revenge, especially if it's a trauma that really caused you to feel like you were betrayed or anything like that, the best revenge is moving on and forgiveness. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you can forgive and move on, you take your power back. Mm-hmm. You ready to get into it? Okay. Invest in professional advice. I love giving you guys advice and supporting you in any way that I can and telling you the things professionals have told me, relaying that to you, but also invest in professionals for your life. Whether that is for your finances, whether that is for your mental health. I've got a lot of professionals backing me up, okay? I really do. I got a therapist. I got a psychiatrist. Woo! I have a financial advisor. I have a CPA. I'm about to get a business manager to help me manage my money. I have a manager that helps me manage my brand deals. There is a team of people holding Bestie B up. Trust me. And I couldn't do it without all these people. I'm very grateful for them. So what I'm saying is that it's okay to lean on other people's strengths and their expertise 
In fact, it's going to make you even more of a superhuman because we don't know it all, but we can always find someone who has the answer. That's what I believe. There's no way you're ever gonna tell me I can't find an answer because I'm gonna find somebody who does, okay? And I'm gonna pay them because it's worth it. And when it comes to things like money and your mental health, I think those are great places to start investing in first. And for me, I've seen a great return in leaning on professionals in those areas. So highly, highly recommend. Another investment, invest in your quality of life, okay? So I have a really good example for this. I am really big on having a cleaning service come like maybe once a month for my sanity. One, because I work in here. It's like maybe $200. I don't go to bars. I don't go out. I really don't be going out to eat like that either. So the money I used to spend being a little fun party girl is now going to having that clean, fresh home once a month where there's literally no dust particles and you walk in and it smells like lemon. Yeah, pick where you want to spend your money because people have tried to jump on my neck for saying that I have a cleaning service come and I'm like, okay, but I see you at brunch every weekend and I know brunch is expensive in Dallas. You're spending more than me. If you really think about where your money is going, you can find ways to improve your life and put dollars into investing in your quality of life and your sanity. Embrace delayed gratification. One of the biggest scams we've been taught because we've got Amazon Prime, we've got DoorDash, is that things can happen overnight. And a lot of you who are content creators, I feel like you, you have to really understand this. The people who blow up overnight, it's not as many as you think. And it's not as sustainable as you think. If you can embrace delayed gratification, if you can learn to enjoy the journey and the process, which by the way, is the best part, is the most beautiful part, you're going to have a more fulfilling life. You're always gonna be chasing after something because that's just human nature to constantly chase after things. Hopefully at some point you will be satisfied, but it's okay to want to challenge yourself and go after a project or do something, right? But don't try to rush things because once you get to the top, that's a short lived experience. And I think I said this in another video, the mountain experience. If it wasn't about climbing the mountain, people would just take a helicopter to the top. But people like to climb mountains, like literal mountains. Why? Because it's a journey. It's a, it's literally a trail. There's a hike you can go on. You can see the nature. You can have this experience. Maybe you're camping out there. You're making these memories with the people you're climbing with. That's the beautiful part right there. Yeah, you could just take the helicopter to the top, but like, what's the point of that? That's not fun. So think about that example when you're going through life and when you're trying to get through a challenge or a new change, the journey is the best part, baby. Have some fun with it. Stop being so serious. And the last thing I'm gonna end on is that you can always negotiate, okay? And this ties into you have not because you ask not. When it comes to the things that you want, deals that you're making, one thing I've learned, especially being a woman who has had to deal with a lot of contracts against corporations, okay? And a black woman at that, I have had to learn over time. It is always a negotiation, especially if they really wanna work with you, especially if they know your potential and your value, there's always room for a conversation. Now that doesn't mean be incredibly difficult, but you can always negotiate. So don't settle, ask questions, know your worth. It's very important. But those are the 23 things I learned in 2023 that have really shaped me. And I'm gonna take these lessons into 2024. So I just wanted to share them with you guys. Just like a fun little cute video to reflect on this year because I cannot believe it's coming to an end. I love you guys. Let me know something that you've learned in 2023 and I'll see you guys next week.